Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Kroner, to statewide news service, jbiztechfelly.com, and now, countless for the Jewish press. And I'm having fun doing all of that. And someone who's having a lot of fun in the State Senate is our guest today, Jesse Hamilton from Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you, Shalom. Thank you for having well, we me here. We call Crown the Holy Land yes. because it is the center of the Chabad Lubavitch, the 770 Eastern Parkway, of course, is just told that I'm from with the Chabad, Chabad's all over the world. So right. every Chabad person feels that you're the senator of their really home base. So that's very good in Crown Heights. Yeah, it was amazing because, uh, you know, every Friday I'm doing Shom's look in Crown Heights. Really? You and uh, that's very good. It's a, it's a great, it's a gratifying experience. I get to meet my neighbors. Uh, it's, a, it's a friendly environment. And then when I went to Israel with David Greenfield, uh, the Labat Habat, recently, recently mm -hmm. I knew more people in Israel than David Greenfield did. <laughs> and it, it was like, and I saw the Rebbe everywhere. I, I, I thought I was in Crown Heights. I mean, I, it, was a, it was definitely a, a gratifying experience to go there and then to especially to see the young men and women yeah. who are fighting from Brooklyn, who are fighting in, on behalf of Israel to keep mm -hmm. us safe. Uh, within his God given did, borders. Did you give them absentee ballots so they still vote? No absentee <laughs> ballots. But uh, I, I pray for them. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and one of the, during the Sabbath, I met Devorah Havelstein Good. in Israel. And she's a, such a passionate speaker. Uh, she's doing such great things. The uh, uh, Crown Heights, uh, I mean, the Children's Jewish Museum had their gala last night. And her daughter lives in my block. And so she always talk about Ari, Ari, Ari. She goes, Jesse, you, yeah. you, you need you to really see. You should talk. I mean, That's people, we, I know what you're talking right. about, but just for our viewers, you know, what he's talking about. I mean, you want to explain oh, to years ago with Ari. Ari yeah. was one of the young men who was murdered on the Brooklyn Bridge uh, by a terrorist attack. And rather than uh, her pain and grieving and wanting to have retaliation, she wanted to bring peace and diversity uh, throughout the community of Brooklyn, New York City, New York State, and the world. And she was the catalyst for uh, the founders as far as the Children's uh, Jewish Museum, uh, which has over 200, two, 2 million visitors so far at the museum of all ethnic groups and cultures and backgrounds and religions. And so what we have in Crown Heights is a microcosm of what we can do throughout the world. Uh, and so when I went to Israel and I saw these young men and women putting their lives on the line and then going throughout Israel and seeing enemies on all its borders, when I came home, I couldn't look at a parent's face and say, I'm going to support the Iranian deal because I'm going to put their children in harm's way. So I voted. I, didn't, I couldn't vote against it, but I, I was against the Iranian deal. We, have, we had a protest in front of the Children's uh, Jewish Museum, and we, we advocated to say, tell the, the uh, president, please, this deal is not a good deal for Israel. So are you disappointed with Kirsten Gillibrand's vote? Yes, right. yes. I'm, 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 I, Did I you think, talk to her about it and try to convey your, you know, dis, uh, discontent? Well, my, my discontent is, is local. And seeing the young men and women putting their lives on the line, you know, going to Who, Storo. Who's and, the uh, congresswoman who represents uh, Crown Heights? Is it Nydia Velasquez or? It's Yvette Clark. It's Yvette Clark. Did she vote against she, it? She voted for it. She voted for the Iran deal? Yes. So did you have a little conversation with her? I mean, that's, you know, I mean, that, you gotta convince these people who are voting for the Iran deal not to vote. Right, they, 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 they voted for the Iran deal. Um, we were very um, outspoken uh, on, on the Iranian deal, uh, going to the road. And when you see young children and parents. Just again, let me frame it for the viewers. Right. I know again what you're talking about. Right. Stay Road is right on the border town. Correct. And you're living with your family. I mean, you know what it means that you're having a, oh, a mortar shell's coming over. You're in the kids in the kindergarten and everybody has to go into a bomb shelter. What kind of life is that? Border it's, of what? Gaza. Right in Gaza. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's, just, it's, near, it's near Gaza. So uh, to put in perspective, uh, Rabbi Simon, you have missiles coming up from Gaza. Uh, so, you, and you have the um, Iron Dome, so you have maybe like half a minute to get to shelter. Uh, and then actually seeing the bus stations that are also shelters. Uh, I couldn't even imagine my children playing a siren going off and they have a half a, a minute to get to shelter. And so you had these children playing in shelters. Just imagine uh, our children in the United States that can't play outside, that they're playing in shelters. And then the shelter itself is not fully a bomb uh, shelter, only certain parts. So even when the, the alarms go off, then they get into certain parts of the shelter. So these are the lifestyles that people are living. I went to the Golden Heights. 
Uh, you can see ISIS flags and the Syrian border. That's terrifying. It was terrifying for me uh, seeing that. So when I came back home, I'm like, you know, people need to see what's happening in Israel. You know, a young man was just stabbed for no other reason but besides being Jewish. I said, oh, my God. You know, you know I'm looking over my shoulder. Uh, we were in the Holy City. You know, it was anti-American sentiment. You know, go home, Americans. So it was for me. By the Arabs, not by the Jews. No, by the Arabs, yes. It, yeah. it, it, was, it, was, it was very frightening to me. Uh, you know, coming from the United States, I thought I was tough coming from Brooklyn. But um, when you, you, you look... You are tough coming from Brooklyn. I am tough coming from Brooklyn, but... And you came from the South Bronx also. I came from the South that, Bronx also you're before that. Tougher. Okay. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's intimidating. Uh, it's scary. Uh, but when I went to the Wheeling Wall, you know, I pray for peace. I pray for people to live in harmony. And I pray that one day uh, the senseless killings will stop. You know, you talk about living in harmony, and I think we should really say this, that of course you're an African American and people like myself are Chabad or Jewish, and, and really I think Crown Heights, and I've heard this, and you can speak for yourself, is just the most you know, integrated and peaceful community, really I heard in the United States. You know, you always have black neighborhoods and white neighborhoods, and here, like you say, you have closets living on the same uh, block as yourself, and everybody's living in harmony. I mean, you know, and then one out of a thousand incidents, some crazy thing happens, and of course that's going to get headlines, and they don't talk about the 999 incidents where people are friendly with each other and working with each other. You're, you're, you're right, Rabbi Simon. I mean, everybody wants the basic things in life. You know, quality education, you know, safe streets, and able to interact with your neighbors. And I think after the Crown Heights riots, we, we, we made a concerted effort to just have more dialogue. I think people just need more dialogue. And the more dialogue we have, we realize we all have the same things that are in common. So when a neighbor was mugged in my block, uh, Pagoni, the first person to come out to stop the muggers was uh, Devorah Havelstein's son-in-law, Yossi. And we stopped the mugging. Um, when uh, Ephraim Klein was shot, you know, we made sure the police did a canvas to find his murder. So we, we're, when they drew SWAT stickers, we had a low tolerance. We made sure that the SWAT stickers were taken off the next day, not just by someone from the graffiti department, but from the neighbors in the community, saying we would not tolerate anti-Semitism in our community. And that has grown in mushroom into just neighbors loving each other and, and, and working uh, together. And I remember at one point in time, uh, young, uh, older Jewish men were being um, mugged for their wedding bands. You know, and I would go to the shul, uh, and I would say, we're going to fight to make sure we catch these guys who are attacking these elderly women. And I would always say, you know, my name is Jesse Hamilton, and you would hear a hush in the room and go, oh, that's Yishe, that's Yishe. You know? <laughs> You're a Hebrew name for the viewers. <laughs> yes. That's how you say it. it's uh, biblical David's yeah. uh, okay. father's <laughs> name was Yishai, but Jesse. And yes. I have to uh, switch gears for a minute, right. if you okay, don't mind, please. Is our political I, reporter right, right. right here. I have two, well, two things. I mean, you, you had a four-way primary in when you first ran. You had Rubain Durancy mm -hmm. running against you. You yeah. had, um, let's see, uh, Demetrius Lawrence. Maybe it was a three-way primary. Right. Okay. Right. So are you still in touch with Rubain and Demetrius? Do you, do they need stuff from your office? Do you? You know, do you have a good working relationship? I mean, you know, primaries are very tough, and you didn't have a Republican running, right. which was interesting in itself. My, my philosophy uh, from the time when I ran for uh, assembly, and I didn't win, and I won a district leader position, was to sit down with my uh, opponents. Because Ruben Durant and I were on the school board at one time. Uh, and I said, this, it's not about us, it's about the community. And whoever wins, we have to support each other to make sure this community stays strong. So from 2006, myself, um, Kareem Kamara, uh, Reverend But Kareem. this was from uh, your Senate. Right, but right, moving yeah. forward. But you ran for assembly? I ran for assembly at one who, point in time. Who against, were you going to replace? I, it was, op it was a, a seat at the Clarence Norman. Oh. And uh, 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 Kareem Kamara won. But I oh. sat down with me, K uh, Kareem Kamara, and Eric okay. Adams. We said, look, it's all about the community, to enhance the, the quality of life in the community. You know, when the voters vote, we, we, we'll stick to the okay. voters, their wishes. So from 2006, until 2014, 15, we never had a race because we always worked together in unison as a team. Okay. So when we had the uh, Senate race, yeah. I sat down with Demetrius and, and Durant and said, look, it's not about us, it's about the community. Whoever wins, 
we have to help each other out. And so I still talk to Demetrius. Ruben Durant, he's a great guy, a great father, family man. So, so, mm -hmm. so there's no bitterness? Or no bitterness no, whatsoever. No blood. Okay. No blood. No blood. All righty. So now I wanted to ask you about your committee assignments. Because mm -hmm. you are ranker on two committees? I'm ranker on two committees, the, yes. The, the Democrats are only, uh, they, they don't chair a committee. Right. Except if you're Simcha Felder. <laughs> and I was how do you get along with Simcha? I mean, you, I know that he's got Borough Park, the other side, of, an, a different side of Brooklyn, but still, you're still fighting for uh, observant Jews and having a, uh, a, you know, for their protection and, you know, there's certain issues. Now, Simcha sits uh, conferences with the Republican caucus. Right. So, and, you know, how do you deal with that? I well, mean, Simcha is, is, a, is a great guy. He's a family man. He's a grandfather. Right. Uh, and I, I've, I visit Simca several occasions, go to his office. Uh, when we went against the Iranian deal, I uh, said it, it was outrageous. Uh, myself, Simca Felder, Dove Hyken went to uh, Jerry Nana's office okay. with Holocaust survivors. Right. And we said, look, you know, we don't want to have another Holocaust uh, in Israel. Mm -hmm. And we told... Uh, of course, uh, uh, Nadler was, uh, what, in favor? He was in favor of the Iranian deal. Uh -huh. So myself, Dov Haikin, and Simka got together and said, look, we have to send a message to, the, just amazing. to you, the congressional you delegation. To, you went to Nadler's office, but not Yvette Clark's office. I went to, <laughs> I went to Nadler's office because... He's Jewish. He's Jewish. You know, he should understand. I mean, if, if anybody should understand, uh, it should be him. Okay. And so Dov Haikin invited me, uh, and Simka came, and, right. and, we, and he, we had Holocaust survivors there. And to see people there, with the but I think you know what I'm getting at. I know what you're getting at. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's talk political. Let's talk political. Okay, because mm -hmm. he's you're maybe one or two seats away from the majority. Right. He's he's the linchpin, especially if you win the Scalos seat. Correct. In Long Island. Correct. What, you know, how do you get him? To, I mean, he's not going to come back to the Democratic I side. I think he. I think he will. I, I think in the last session. Simka and I were, 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 were sitting down, we were, were talking a lot, and I could see he, he, he felt uncomfortable because they didn't get the tuition. I was going to ask you, education, the, investment, tax credit. The tax credit, you know, I was sending my kids to private school, and I call it, I call it, I was spending yeshiva money, uh -huh. $20,000 per child. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. a person should have to put, refinance their house every other year to send their child to school. So... The, the education tax credit would have helped many families yes. in, in the Jewish community. And uh, Simka felt that the Republican Senate uh, didn't fight hard enough for it. So the last vote for the budget, yeah. Simka was the only person that voted no to voice his, his opposition to what happened. you voted for it. I voted for it because it was, it was the minimum wage. Uh, it was for the Paid uh, Family Leave Act. It had a lot of things in it. And I, I was upset because they gave us the budget two hours before we voted on it. So I got the budget at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> being After up, being up for, all, for all, 20 all, hours. 20 yeah. hours. Right. Then they said you have to read this within two hours and then come back and vote on it. You know, That's so, why you have staff. Right, but just the staff. I'm joking. I'm <laughs> joking. I was there. I was right. in, on right. staff. I right. was there on staff. Right. I know. So <laughs> I, I, I think Simka um, is trying to get the best for his community. And he realized that with the Senate Republicans, he could not get the support he needed. Well, except that they passed the bill. The it was the first bill that the Senate passed. It was the the the, the what, first the EITC was the right, first yes, bill yes, yes, yes. that mm -hmm. the Senate passed. They right. made a point of passing it as the first bill because Correct. I mean the Senate Majority Leader John Flanagan, right. who used to chair the Education Committee in Correct. the Senate, he is. You know, right behind this, he's it's a forefront for him. Mm -hmm. It's the unions who back you, and you know, and, and the assembly they got a stranglehold on this issue. So, you know, ha I have a vested interest also, Mark. My, yeah, my son do. goes to parochial school, so but the unions back, so you're really twixt in between, right? Because you got the unions backing you, and you're voting in favor of this EITC, correct. Correct. I, I think that every parent should have the option to send their child to a school of their choice. You know, if you pay property taxes, right. a, a large portion of your property taxes goes to the schools. So every person should have the opportunity to send their child to the best school that they can afford to go to, that the child is able to thrive and learn. 
And, and, and today, like you look at the Waze. Waze was founded by some, a gentleman from Israel. You know, so innovation, technology, mm -hmm. it, right now the schools are not up to pace with what's going on. Uh, and yeshivas, I live, I live behind the yeshiva. You know, I, I, the no, kids no, get no up and, and yeah. you voted for the EITC. Right. Do you think the unions will still back you? Sure. Sure. I mean, one issue doesn't define Jesse well, Hamilton. Then, well, then why don't you show this, show the way to the, your colleagues in the assembly and let them know that just because they vote for this, the unions will still support them? Right. That's... I, I, agree, I agree with what you're saying. See, I don't think right. there's enough lobbying going on from the Jewish community side. I think it's all quiet. It's not, the Catholic conference is out there. You know, they bring the, uh, the bishop or, you know, they bring the mm, cardinal. The cardinal, right. And they bring all the bishops and they make a big uh, grandstand about it. But, there's, but the Ag Agudas Israel is simply in the background and they're having private meetings and they're, doing, they're lobbying a different way. I think the, the assembly will come on board. If we got Rabbi Simon to come oh, in. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's why, Maybe. But you know, you got Deborah Glick, who's the chair of the Higher Education Committee. She comes out with a news. This is, DITC is dead for the year. You know, it's not going to happen. You got other strong, you know, Kathy Nolan is against it. I think it has to be modified somewhat, uh, Mark, where you, ha where you can take a, a someone, any individual, can donate $200,000 and get... 90% of that money back as a tax credit. Uh -huh. But if, if it was just geared for the parents, yeah. where if I'm a parent, if I pay uh, $10,000 and I can get $9,000 back as a tax credit, that's more palatable. Okay. To let some investment banker get a tax credit, uh, for don and it's, it, they can donate to any school they want. Right. And they might donate to a school that, that, that their best friend is going to. Mm -hmm. Children is going to, right. and so the best friend gets the tax credit for this child school, and it can be it can be reciprocated mm -hmm. between the private schools. So I think it has to be more uh, f on the ground for the parents who are paying the money, not for investors who are donating the money to the schools. Okay, because the parents should be the one getting the tax uh, credit, not some person right. who has no child in the school system. Okay, so it's a great idea, but I think if you just look at it from the parental point. Uh, point of view, where if a parent is getting it yeah. versus someone has no child in the school, right. that it's, it's hard right. for some people, a pill for some people, some people to swallow. Okay, so that's an interesting point of view. Right. Now, as I said earlier, you're uh, the ranker, the Democratic leader of uh, the Banks and Mental Health Committee? That is correct. Are they connected in somehow, Banks and Mental Health? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do only when the stock market goes down. A, a message? Is he sending a message? <laughs> no. I, uh, when I, when I, <laughs> good point, Mark. When I was elected uh, to the state senate, um, mental health was a, a committee that was open. Yeah. Uh, and banking is something passionate. I have an MBA uh, in finance. So that's right. something I wanted to take on was the banking aspect. Okay. But I'm so happy that I did take on the mental health because a lot of the issues that are facing uh, our communities are mental health issues. And it's a stigma to get help. Right. Do you have opponents? I, I mean, you know, do you have, I mean, there's no Republican who would, I mean, it's a conservative community. Right. And, and, you know, do you have, are there Republicans out there who want to oppose you or no? No, I get along with everybody. Okay. So, so you know, because I see that Mental Health and D Developmental Disabilities Committee, the people who are involved in those bills, they're not, um, they, they don't have big bucks. They don't have uh, huge uh, deep pockets. Right. Where the bankers, they contribute on a regular basis to campaign committees. Right. So keep... I can see why you have both from a, from a political science standpoint. Well, you know, I, I just want to say the mental health because one of my 10 jobs is visiting prisoners. And they say, I don't know if you know the statistics, that one third of the prisoners have mental health problems. Higher than that. Uh, well, really? I wanted to ask you know him. Higher than that. Yeah. Do, I wanted to yeah. ask him about right. that also with the, right. when it comes to uh, guns and gun violence uh, right. about mental health. Mm -hmm. But I kind of wanted to stay on the banks thing first and then move over to right. mental health. Okay. Uh, so, so the banks have the deep pockets and they contribute much more to, I mean, uh, you know, that's why I Well, the banks people, are federally so. uh, are chartered. A lot of the yeah. banks are federally, federally chartered. Right. Uh, so we don't really have much jurisdiction like DFS. And the banking, it, at one time it was the banking committee uh, and, and insurance, they partitioned it, and yeah. now it's banking insurance and you have the DFS. So they kind of diluted the authority uh, of uh, the committee. So you're saying if they do, but, but the banks still contribute 
to can political campaigns. I haven't got any money from the banks. Really? Yes. Yeah, I got to try hard. <laughs> I'll give you some <laughs> right, names. Right, 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 right. Okay. Go get to the mental health. So let's health go back issue. to mental right. health. Let's go back or to mental health. health. I mean, you know, I really think it's a major issue because first of all, as you say in Yiddish, Rachmanis, he have a compassion on right. someone's mental health. You know, sometimes it is. Oh, he has a broken arm. Of course, you go to the hospital. There's nothing to talk about mm. mental health. Oh, you know, we don't want to do anything about it. Just sit at home and. Mm -hmm. you know, stew in your juices, and it really isn't right, because it really is a disease that has to be helped, and if anything, like we say, I, I don't know, you know statistics of how many people in prison, you were just saying that. Over, it's, it's like between 60 to 70 percent of the, of the people incarcerated have mental issues. Really? A third, right? a third have severe mental uh, issues. Oh, so many people out of prison have mental health. And a lot of people, you know, <laughs> I mean, don't we all, I mean, I asked someone, I, right. well, we had someone from the Mental Health Association on, I said, what is normal? Right. I mean, doesn't everyone have a mental health issue? We all we all have we all depression, have mental health issues. We all have anxiety, but <laughs> right now, alarming statistics are the children. Children between the ages of six and eleven, the third leading cause of death is suicide. Really? You know, uh, the second leading cause of death for children thirteen to thirty-five is suicide. So we have an epidemic going on in America with suicide, where a lot of our youth are not being able to, not just people who are committing suicide, we're not talking about people who have suicidal tendencies that lead to their death. Uh, so what we're trying to do is just get more funding, more exposure, and we're introducing legislation right now that's been introduced on, on the uh, Senate side myself and uh, Mark Crespo on the Assembly side, that every teacher has to take a mental health course to determine whether or not the child has a mental issue or behavioral issue. Because if it's a mental issue, you suspend the kid, you never address the underlying cause, foundation right. of what the issue is. So we're trying to get more information out there uh, we're going to be introducing legislation for when you get out of prison. Like uh, Rabbi Simon said, if you have a mental issue, the, your probation officer can't help you. You need someone, a psychologist, psychiatrist, a social worker, to understand what the root cause of your problem the probation is. Probation officers don't even come visit half the time. And you, and you go to right. their office, and if you miss a thing, you know, they don't really come and try to track you down. They're too busy. They have, right. a, they have case overload. And, and compassion in the Jewish religion, yeah. uh, a lot of times we see a person who's homeless on the street as a mental disease, and we look at them like they're lepers. You know, no one's really, but we saw someone who hurt their foot, we would say, can I help you out? Can I call a doctor? You know, we've been so conditioned to not You're right. look at the people who have mental illness mm -hmm. to the point where they become invisible. Mm -hmm. And then we only recognize them when they push somebody in front of a train. You know, or they cut somebody. Yeah. You know, but the symptoms, you know, or when a woman throws a baby out the window, those people, if you go back and check their medical records, have been in and out of institutions, have been documented as having, having a mental disorders, but we're not spending the money. You know, we just wait to the back end when mm -hmm. they, something happens to themselves <laughs> or someone else, and then we spend the money. But if we just spent the money on the front end, Right. We're spending $100,000 a year for incarcerating people. A hundred, right. and per, I think per person. Per person. Yeah. Per person. It went up from 60. Went to 60. So it now, used to be 60,000. That was Mario Cuomo's number. Right. Yeah. But, but now that the economy is changing, <laughs> now that the drugs are not affecting inner city, right. the highest drug usage right, right now in, in, in deaths are in the suburbs. And you know, so, so, so the fight on the war on drugs now yeah, right. is changed because the people who, who the war is being fought against, the complexion is changing. So it's not the inner city, it's more the suburbs now. I do want to point out that you do have a, a mental health bill uh, that is in finance committee mm -hmm. that says, directs the Office of Mental Health to establish the Urban Youth Gun Violence Reduction Pilot Program and appropriates $12 million for that. Right. Now we have a $150 billion budget, so I guess $12 million is just, you know, off the edge, you know, it's a change, it's fair change. It's a but, step in the right direction. But, but what is this bill about, and why is it stuck in finance? Why is, is it the NRA? Is it, uh, you know, the gun lobbyists voting, uh, urging senators not to let it out? I, I always say someone's being penny wise and pound, pound foolish. Yeah. Like in Brownsville, we have million dollar blocks. But what would this bill do? It, it'll introduce uh, a way for people to understand dispute resolution uh, just get information out there. Some people, if you grew up in a community and... But urban youth, gun violence, and mm -hmm. mental health, I'm trying to put the two together. You have a mental health problem, Mark. If I step on your toe and I get so upset, I pull out a, if I step on your brand new sneakers, I step on your Air Jordans, and you, and, you, know, and you go, oh, you stepped on my Air Jordans, you did it on purpose, and I take out a gun and shoot you, you have a mental issue. 
The people, not, not a behavioral. It's not a behavioral. No. It's, 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 it's a, a mental. It's, it's a mental issue. When someone decides that I'm going to, like in Crown Heights, had a young man who was stabbed in the back. For no reason whatsoever, God just walks up, mm -hmm. stabs a young Jewish guy in the back. That person has a mental issue. We know who these kids are. You know, some of them come out of shelters. Some of their parents are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. uh, their parent may have a mental uh, uh, issue. And so at a young age, we've identified these people already. But we, we're not giving them the proper resources to deal with the mental dis uh, uh, instability they have in so their lives. So what's the opposition to your bill? Some people are making money on, on other people's suffering, believe it or not. Who? Yeah, the prisons, upstate New York. Yeah. That's, it's, in upstate New York, you say, well, why do we need prisons? No, it's, it's economic, the economy. It's the economy. Yeah. Mostly, the, the upstate region is, is economies, right. no more manufacturing. Right. And if you look at the upstate region, it's prisons and colleges that are really maintaining. And farms. And Don't farms. I'm sorry. Farms. Farm, God, agriculture. <laughs> Thank you. Farms are You the, are on the agriculture <laughs> committee, right. which and I can't <laughs> understand <laughs> unless you're growing pot or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, we, we have food deserts. Well, you know, Shirley Chisholm was put right. on, she was the first uh, African-American to be put on the uh, Congress, the House uh, Agriculture Committee. Correct. And she, everyone asked her, how, why did you get put on the House Agriculture Committee? She said, someone heard a tree grows in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it was really because of the food stamp program. And well, that the was, Rebbe advisor was from the Rebbe himself. It was from the Rebbe oh, himself. Yeah, you know this story. I heard the story. Oh, the Rebbe, tell, she, yeah, she, tell the story. See? Just, um, <laughs> the Rebbe, uh, she said, I'm on the, on the uh, agriculture committee. What can I do? They made a joke out of it. made a joke her, out of it. You know, yeah. because, like, you know, what's a person in Brooklyn doing on the agriculture? Yeah. They're making a joke out of this. Mm, right. Problem. Like I try to do. Yeah. <laughs> but so. And then the Rebbe, you know, told her, you know, you can do good things. Right. With food, and now the, the food stamp program is like one of the staples to keep people out of poverty. And what we're trying to do now with the Agriculture Committee, we have all this great farm in the Hudson Valley, western New York, but we can't get it into New York City. So we have places like, you know, Bed-Stuy, right. um, Brownsville, East New York, we have food deserts. You have more fast food restaurants, mm -hmm. or you have more liquor stores, than you have fruit. So you have obesity, you know, hypertension. But now you've got farmer's markets. But they're expensive. Oh, is that the problem? Because you know, that's the problem. where the upstaters are bringing their foods down to. It's great for the upstaters to bring it down. You can go to Grand Army Plaza, the most affluent people in Brooklyn in there, and they're buying your product you know, at a, at a, at a profitable most price. Most affluent people in Grand Army Plaza, and I don't see the two. I don't see, you think well, he's, he's that's right, the most man. affluent people are around Grand in Brooklyn. Army Plaza? In Brooklyn. I grew up in Mill Basin. Right. I know affluence. <laughs> right. I just didn't think that Grand Army Plaza was an affluent area. Oh, yeah, Park Slope. Oh, sure. Park Slope okay. is right there. And, uh, um, behind, you're behind the time. Well, that's behind good. <laughs> I mean, Chuck I mean, Schumer, out of there for Chuck Schumer years. lives right near there, right. so it must be what affluent. The most know, expensive so. property is being sold now in, in, in Park Slope. Oh, really? Uh, okay. So, you know, but what happens is if, you're, if you have food stamps yes. or, or, the, or SNAP, whatever the, the program is, right. there's only one line to take your, your card. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the people who are getting assistance have to wait on one line. Right, and then everyone knows. And everyone knows. Right. So it's, we have to make sure that we can take away that. So stigma. The stigma. So you have to wait on line, and people know who you are. And, and, so, and we need to get it, some food markets into Brownsville. OK. And get some time, because the money I was, was surprised <laughs> that Brownsville has million dollar homes for sale. No, it's not million dollar homes. It's million dollar blocks. No, there were homes going for a million dollars. Oh, really? And I was shocked when I heard that in Brownsville because I remember Mike Tyson growing up in Brownsville, right. and I remember what you know that's Bed Stuy in Brownsville. Mm. You don't go there. Right. I was told from a young age growing up in Mill Basin, you don't go to it's those. It's a new world over here. Marlo. So new Brownsville world. had a has a history of uh, a Jewish population. Yes, at one it does. Point oh, time. absolutely. East New York. East New York. Right. Absolutely. Oh, I, I and know. eventually <laughs> the the, uh, <laughs> the the Jewish population moved out. Okay. Uh, right, I do want to lend this on a high note because yes. you did get a bill passed the Senate. That's unusual for a Democrat, right. I guess. Uh, it relates to the eligibility of parents of children attending pre-K programs to right. serve on a community <laughs> district education council. Correct. What the heck is that? And why did it pass the Senate? Is it non-controversial? It's basically non-controversial, mm -hmm. and I get along with everybody. I know you do. Yeah. I'm not uh, and, and basically, that. basically, we want to make sure that parents, this, to me, is a high correlation between uh, student achievement and parental, parental involvement. And the earlier your parent gets a child involved with their child's education, the better off we all are as a community. When I was the president of the school board, we had the fifth best school in New York State, 
the Crown School for Law and Journalism. Excellent. Public School 161. So I'm always an a, a advocate, yeah. a great advocate in education. And the earlier we get kids involved right. and parents involved in education, the better we all are. And uh, who's sponsoring in the assembly or did it pass the assembly? I'm not or? sure if it passed the assembly yet. But who's sponsoring in the assembly? Um, don't you put me on a spot. I, I, because you oh, you overcame I, the I, hurdle, the I, hardest, I think it's the a Diane Richardson, hurdle. right, Diane Richardson, right, 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 so right, right. This should be easy for the assembly to pass it, you know. Exactly. All right, well. Walter Mosley, sorry, Walter Mosley, yes. Okay. okay. It's our friend. Yes. All right, so, so we're out of time, but, you know, we're going to have to ask you again. Senator, it was such a good time with you, and you're doing great work. This is great. Yeah. Not great. only for the people of New York, people of Crown Heights, and really all the entire community, like you say, you get along with everybody. Right. So that's very to, kudos to you, and continue your good health and uh, success with and what you're doing. Thank you very much, Simon. Continued you. success. Shalom. God yes. bless. Mark, thank you so much. And thank you for